Support this podcast via our Patreon and get more writerly goodness. Visit patreon.com slash nanocast to join up. Welcome to NaNoWriMo Every Month. My name is J. Daniel Sawyer. I'm the author of some 20 books, 34 short stories, and numerous articles and other things, and I am your guide on this journey to use NaNoWriMo to level up to professional output levels. Now it's day three, and you're starting to have to work on a sequence of events for your characters. Your character, who's in a setting with a problem, is starting to have to make choices and go places. You're at about 5,000 words, which puts you somewhere between the end of chapter 1 and the end of chapter 3, depending on how short your chapters are. And that means that you're already getting into the story proper. So it's worth talking about whether or not you should bother with an outline. Outlining and pantsing are the kinds of things you hear people going back and forth on, and it varies a lot by genre, it varies a lot by style of writer, it varies a lot by the medium. Screenwriters, for example, have to have an outline. Even if they don't write to it, they eventually have to conform their screenplay to it, because screenplays have set limitations in time. A book doesn't have set length limitations. It's got sort of a floor of around twenty-five or 30,000 words, which is where you get into short novel territory. And it's got sort of a ceiling of around a million words, which is, I'm sure, what something like A Song of Ice and Fire or Alan Drury's Advise and Consent series winds up being. In either case, you're probably starting to wonder if you should have prepared an outline. Or if you did prepare an outline, you may be starting to wonder why it's not helping you more than it is. Now, I actually come out of screenwriting, so I do use outlines for some things, particularly very complicated plots that run for hundreds of thousands of words. But as I've grown as a writer, I've learned that the less of a firm outline I give myself, the faster and better my writing is. And it's because I'm not trying to self-censor. Self-censorship is the thing that gets all writers in trouble. The more you get in your own way, the more you say, don't do that because it's not on the plan. Don't do that because it'll cause problems. The more you're cutting yourself off from the kinds of leaps of intuitive genius that make a story great, and that make your story different from everybody else's story. This is something that's worth thinking about. The stuff that comes out of your head and onto the paper is the stuff that makes your story worth reading. It doesn't sound like it to you because it's in your head all the time. It sounds normal and boring to you. But to someone who doesn't live in your head, what comes out of your head and goes into the computer, that's completely new. And the less you filter it, the better and newer and more interesting and exciting it is. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't try to tackle big, important ideas or great story arcs. But if you do, you may want to think about not outlining. Rather than outlining, give yourself some dots to connect. For my recent novel, The Resurrection Junket, I had a character and I knew that I needed them to die, to have their neural patterns and DNA travel on a space probe to an alien planet, and for them to be rebuilt there, and for their presence to severely screw up the mission to this alien planet. Not because of anything bad they did, but because the kind of person they are would tend to destabilize that sort of mission. I was playing with some ideas I'd read about in Abnormal Psych and in cutting-edge science journals, and I had some high points I wanted to hit. I knew that it was the kind of story where things would go downhill hard and fast, so I knew I had this kind of trajectory that I needed to find. And I knew that with this kind of story, the heroic deed would cost the character dearly. But when I went into the story, that was all I knew. As the story unfolded, I found all the little wrinkles along the way, all the little pieces that made this trajectory work. And I did it because I held myself with a loose hand. It's like holding a sword or a pencil or a gun. If you hold it too tight... You can't really control what's coming out of the other end, because your big slow-twitch muscles don't have fine motor control. It's the little fast-twitch muscles, the ones that you access without conscious thought, that make the difference between signing your name and making a weird mark on the paper, that make the difference between hitting the target and hitting the barn on the other side of it, that make the difference between a beautiful painting and a smear. 
you've got an entire autonomic nervous system whose job it is to take care of the fine details. And you should trust that system to connect the dots that your conscious mind is interested in exploring. So give yourself an outline if it helps you. Give yourself the major points you want to connect and then let your inner two-year-old run wild between them and play because that part of you knows how to tell a story. I'll see you tomorrow. NaNoWriMo Every Month is written and presented by J. Daniel Sawyer and produced by Artistic Whispers Productions. Visit our website at NaNoWriMoEveryMonth.com and leave a tip in the tip jar to support this podcast. NaNoWriMo Every Month is copyright 2015 by J. Daniel Sawyer and Artistic Whispers Productions and released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License.